Uh, right, come on then, Damon. Let's get your reaction to this news. It's huge, isn't it? It is. I was, you were talking about other uh, events like this, and I was thinking Mansell. That's the only thing I can think of. It's sort of Mansell-esque proportions when M Nigel decided he was going to leave and he wasn't going to sign for Williams and he was going to go to the United States. It was going back to those sort of days when you had big announcements and big shifts. This is, uh, as Jensen said, as we all were saying, it's huge for Formula One. It's really put a spring in the step of <clears throat> the start of the season and you know, things for us to talk about all season long. And, of course, we've got a whole year now before he actually puts on the red overall. So um, it just rolls We through. don't, though. We don't, David. Look behind you, because oh, that's, that's what he's going to look like. <laughs> okay. uh, and, and I think it, I think it suits him. <laughs> I think we could probably come up with something a bit better than that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, I knew you'd style it out with the trousers. Well, you, had to, you had to put them I'm on, I'm melting into the sofa, <laughs> aren't I? Tell us what, you, what, what your reaction well, is Well, I think you this. can always judge how big news is by how much your phone blows up. And you hear from people, they haven't bothered contacting you for your birthday, for Christmas. Oh, people. but they yeah, want to talk course. about Lewis going to Ferrari, don't they? Yeah. Um, I'm with Jensen, though. I'm curious as to why he's made the decision now. I don't doubt why he's made the decision. I get the romance of every driver wanting to drive for Ferrari at some point in their career or close out their, their career there. But why make the decision now? You've got the luxury of 2024. What does he know about this Mercedes that's actually perhaps fueled the decision to come out a bit earlier? Or what does he know about the Ferrari oh, and, and, like and 2026? Yeah, I mean, look, as, as a man who's had a subscription to Autosport since, what, I don't know, since 1983, you'll have, you'll have read every cover page to page since well, then, but come yeah, on. Yeah, listen, you know, as you say, I, I do love my history, and I, I, that's what I woke up thinking this morning is there were parallels, right? Sebastian Vettel, Lewis Hamilton went on a run of four consecutive world championships, had a, a year, or in Lewis's case, two years without success, and went to Ferrari. And, and there's absolute parallels. Mansell, you just mentioned, great run of form in the early eight, in the mid '80s of Williams. Yeah. Had a wobbly 1988. Went to Ferrari. There's there's that okay. law which draws these drivers. And Mansell, of course, the last British driver to race for Ferrari. So, for me, the timing. I think I think you've got a really good point there, which is the timing suggests he doesn't have the confidence that Mercedes are going to dig out of this hole quick enough for him to challenge Max. Lewis Hamilton doesn't exist to finish second. He doesn't care about being second, third, fourth in the World no. Championship. He probably doesn't remember how many times he's finished second, third, fourth. He exists to win, and he doesn't think he's going to get that chance at Mercedes. So, Karun, has the romanticism blurred his judgment then? Because why not learn from Vettel? It doesn't mean just because you slip on those overalls it's going to translate to success. Well, this is the, the answer that we want to know, isn't it? What has Ferrari told him mm. that is going to be special about the 26 car? Because it's 25 is a transitional year, isn't it, Martin? Like, whatever we're going to have in 24, they'll pretty much evolve the cars for 25 because we have such a big regulation change coming in 26. So what has John Elkin and Fred Vassour told... Lewis Hamilton about 2026, that has convinced him to go And there. you mentioned Elkin. Elkin is, is, is potentially the key here, isn't he? Because it, we, we understand they form quite a tight bond, um, what we hear behind the scenes, and that they've been talking for a while since they met at an event. There, there is this romanticism that I, I, I think that we're buying into, and you, you're talking about there. But you can imagine for, for Lewis, imagine what it would feel like for him in those over overalls to stand on the podium at Monza or to go to Senna's hometown and win the, win the Brazilian Grand Prix in the colours that he never wore or get a ninth British Grand Prix uh, win at, at Silverstone. There's so much there that you, can, you could look at and think, yeah... I could see why he wanted to do that. Well, something's dissatisfied him at Mercedes-Benz, there's no doubt about yeah. that. But I think also, just I imagine Lewis, looking back at the last couple of years, hasn't won a race, realises that his life has taken off all sorts of other extracurricular stuff, and he wants to refocus on his, on his racing. Needs a new challenge as he turns 40. And he's brought Mark Hines back in, his yeah. long-standing sort of right-hand man at the track, a racer, uh, as it were. And, and I think this is Lewis going, right, I, I want to refocus on my racing driving and I, I want this challenge. And I, and I think also, logistically, of course, um, Ferrari were on the cusp of signing Carlos Sainz. They needed to know, and we all know this business of Formula One, that news would be out in a heartbeat mm. somewhere along the line. So it might as well come out now. And it does mean that Lewis will be, um, you know, cut out of any knowledge through this season. Could the extracurricular stuff actually be the defining factor in all of this? We, we've, we've touched on it earlier about the fact that he could 
do huge amounts with Ferrari and their brand globally, as he has with Mercedes. He's been such a trailblazer. If anyone can achieve that, it is Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, but I think also he could have done a Moss and a Fangio and been a Mercedes ambassador for life, well, couldn't he? said he? that, didn't he? He said yeah. in the past he, he wants to be with Mercedes like Sterling Moss was for the rest of his life. Mm, it's yeah. So it, I think that is... You know what? Over the winter, I watched on Sky Documentaries, there's a Agnelli documentary about the Ferrari family, and John Elkan, who's um, the nephew, is, is in there. And it, you, you just fall in love with it, don't you? You yeah. fall in love with the story. There's another one called, I think, Race to Immortality also. Yeah. So, and you just, there, there is something romantic about it, and he's, he's bought into it. But I think he's an ambassador for Formula One, not necessarily Mercedes, and that's perhaps what he sees as the opportunity. But, David, I want, I want to come to you. I know it was, the, the, it was a very different set of circumstances, but when Benson <laughs> broke the story, was it Hockenheim back in, in, in 1995 that you weren't going to be driving for, for Williams after 1996? You had to deal with, with that, that whole situation. Yeah, I, you won a championship yeah. uh, in, in 96. But how difficult was it for you knowing that you know, that had kind of happened? Well, it was a bit of a shock to the system. It's not quite like uh, the situation exactly. that Lewis has taken command of his career and his direction. It's not like Mercedes has said to him, always oh, sign someone else, this, which is what happened with me. So, but I think that in this decision, I, I just think that we know it's a given the Ferrari benefits of the brand and all the other things that come with romance and the history and all that, it, it's a given. But I think there's more to this, which is, I, th I thought there was evidence that Ferrari were starting to solidify yeah. as a competitive package. They were starting to put together the, the components and they were starting to get results. And I think if you had a choice between Mercedes giving you the same equipment and mm. Ferrari, I think for all the things that mm. Martin was saying, a spring in the step for your career, I'd rather go to Ferrari and try something different. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. think that's a sorry, I think that's a really good point because ultimately... As I say, he exists to win. Charles Leclerc qualified on the front row the last five Grand Prix last year. Mm -hmm. And I think Ferrari showed that upward trajectory. Yeah, Lewis has got to make sure he goes to Ferrari and does a Michael Schumacher and not a Sebastian Vettel <laughs> yeah. or a Fernando Alonso. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's the problem. Right.